The BBC reported that the killing started after violent clashes. Now that's a naked lie. 60 people were slaughtered by snipers and no Israeli soldier had a scratch. Not a single Israeli soldier had a scratch, was injured as those snipers crumpled men, women and children to the ground and laughed about it sometimes. How can you have violent clashes when there are 60 dead on one side and laughter and not a scratch on the other side? But the BBC tried to spin it. They tried to draw a veil over bloody barbarism. The barbarism of soldiers in a settler colonial project who think the natives are subhuman, who've already achieved, who've already slaughtered, who've already spilled so much blood that they can do it. And Britain still sells sniper rifle parts to the Israeli army. Maybe those sniper rifle parts were being used to butcher 61 demonstrators throwing bombs, shooting. No! Demonstrating for rights that you and I take for granted. The right to move freely to another city or town. The right to clean water. The right to move even a couple of hundred yards without snipers having them in their crosshairs. People demonstrating for human rights, butchered by an army of snipers. This is bloody barbarism. And Johnson, what do you call that clown who's our foreign minister? When Johnson was asked a question in the Houses of Parliament, his reaction was to get up and walk out of the House of Parliament as quickly as he possibly could. What a disgusting creature. We knew that he had nothing but contempt for us. We knew he had nothing but contempt for the people in Grenfell who were burned alive so recently. But what they do to the people of Gaza and what he okays and what he arms and what he defends and what he protects it's what they would do to anybody if we were helpless in front of them. And friends, we have to move on behalf of the people of Palestine. When you see snipers, we've seen, I, I relived it recently, they butchered 2,200 people in 2014. They butchered nearly 2,000 in 2008, 2009. I was living in Edinburgh at the time. And I was living in a scheme in the inch, but you could see line of sight to Edinburgh Castle. And in Hogman A, they have this fantastic firework display. And I had just come back from Gaza, and those fireworks were falling on the ground in Edinburgh at the same time as white phosphorus was raining down on the friends I had just stayed with in Gaza a couple of months before. And the British government was praising Israel for its restraint. The British government was shining a bright green light to Israel, saying, do what the hell you want, you can go as far as you want, you can butcher and we will support you. It was barbarism. But you know, even that, you can drop bombs for 20,000 feet, you don't see the carnage. You can fire shells from tanks and still you don't see the carnage. But when you look at people through the crosshairs of your sniper rifle, and Friday after Friday, you butcher them, you slaughter them, you see them fall, you see them walking away. My God, they killed a man who had no legs. They killed a man who had lost his two legs, shattered in a previous Israeli attack. And Mark Regev was on the BBC saying he was a threat to the security of Israel. Lies upon lies upon lies. If we don't raise our game, and Card is playing a great role in bringing you folk together tonight. A great role. It'll be visible. You're filming it. They'll see it in Palestine. The salt being rubbed in their wounds by the British government. There's a psychopath called Donald Trump who celebrates it. But they'll know that people like you are turning out on a night like this in your own time. 
to show that you're decent, your people are conscience. And these barbarians in London who support the barbarians in Tel Aviv do not speak in our name. But not only that, if I'm getting kicked over by some thug, I don't want you to walk past and say, it's not in my name, pal. I want you to help me. I want you to be with me. Solidarity is we are in the trenches with the Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. I was on trial for five of the last nine years for racism. We've seen Ken Livingston, that creature Chakrabarti today called for Ken Livingston to be kicked out of the Labour Party because he told the truth. Everywhere the Nazis went in World War II, there were collaborators. Collaborators in Guernsey, collaborators in France, collaborators in everywhere they went. And of course, some Jews collaborated with the Nazis and some of them were leaders. And Ken Livingston is telling the God all honest truth when he says there were some collaborators with the Nazis. No doubt about it. And now he's been silenced, not because of what he said. He's not even allowed to say it. Now let's imagine for a minute, as a calm, dispassionate historian, you look at the Second World War and you say, Ken, you were wrong. He made a mistake. It's a parallel universe because he's not wrong. Why should he be expelled and silenced to intimidate you? Why are people put on trial to intimidate us? I was on trial and after two years I learned why I was a racist worth hundreds of thousands of pounds of legal time in Edinburgh Sheriff Court. Five of us said, and I don't expect you to believe me because it sounds demented, we were racist because we said, end the siege of Gaza, genocide in Gaza. And the Procurator Fiscal demanded that be made a crime if uttered anywhere. The Sheriff had an outbreak of common sense and laughed at him and ridiculed him. And we won that case. Again in Glasgow Sheriff Court, after the massacre of 2014, while the bodies of babies were still in ice cream fridges in Gaza because the morgues were overflowing, while the bodies were barely cold, we attacked the butchery of the Palestinian people. And we were arrested and charged with racism. Because when we stood up and said, end the butchery of men, women and children in Gaza, this is bloody murder. A Glasgow Procurator Fiscal said, after three years in court, and a vast amount of your money spent on it, he said it is racist to say that because really what you mean is Jews kidnapped Christian children in the Middle Ages and used their blood in there as a, a stupid libel for the Middle Ages. It was thrown out of court, but it took three years. All over England and Wales, in America at the moment, and I want you all to remember this, in America at the moment, a bill going through the Congress has got almost 50 senators, almost halfway there. Jerry, if you want me to shut up, you'll have to tell me. <laughs> that bill will impose a $1 million fine and up to 20 years in prison on the kind of people who organised this event. Anybody who organises for boycott, divestment and sanctions risks a million dollars. Now write that in your forehead, that's how much you're worth. You might not have known it before, but the US Congress is saying you're doing something dangerous to the state of Israel. You're doing something dangerous to Trump and his gang. And they're telling us that we have to carry on and do that and build it to a new level. Friends. Different language to what I would use, but I completely agree with the sentiment. Friends, I'll finish by saying this. Strathclyde Pension Fund Strathclyde Pension Fund is run out of there. They invest in five of the ten biggest arms companies in the world. They invest in arms companies that supply Israel to do what they did a couple of days ago. Palestine's not